All right, so I am practicing patience today because this week I left tons of money on the table by not practicing it. So today I did not practice patience with my buying because I know how fast it can move, especially purchasing in the morning. So of course I scale up. So I start off big and then as the options go down i just buy more into it so right now i'm at a 32 dollar position um it's been quite a road i started by purchasing at 205 and going down i think all the way down to 150 but of course i didn't buy anything at 150 um so i averaged in down to 162 and I'm just waiting for it to fall. So I'm up right now 9.3%. Um, so I'm actually going to take some off of the table. I'm going to start off with five or three because um, we... So we're at a um, a point here. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Um, so we're at a level, <clears throat> and I want to make sure that it doesn't reverse. So I do want to lock a couple in. I'm just second guessing myself because yes I scaled down but I started at 205 so I'm the federal open market committee yesterday Susan Collins I was there and she said you know there's more work to be done I hate to sell all of this echoed of we're still going to raise rates at a time when I don't think we've been for less than what I put in we don't have a lot of view on the finish line and I said you know inflation is like fighting is like a marathon not a sprint we haven't yet hit the hardest mile and we now can't see uh, get a real focus on I'm looking line. for it to we drop to another without causing what, like 40 cents or scarring recession I think the Fed needs to take a breath and get a focus and get some view on what the trend All right, so we got a higher high here in the rest of this marathon that they don't want to get tripped up in that could cause a much deeper recession it's and much more cooling of the economy. A chilling to a freezing point is not what you All want. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and we're going to buy it's a, very difficult a call wire because I really do want to yeah. hold that. No, I was just going to say I think the market's with you. I think the market, that's what the market um, is telling us, right? That, that, that it's time for a pause and then for, for cuts and, and don't make a mistake here, but that's not what the Fed is telling us. So do you ultimately think there is going to be a mistake it's, made? I do think the risk of a mistake just went up quite dramatically, and I do think it's important, too, that the markets are a little bit, you know, the Goldilocks scenario is not really out there. This is not a mild situation. There is, you know, non-linearity is the word we're hearing from central bankers over and over and over again. And that is that Going from 9% to 4% that quick. That's what happens when I'm recording and not thinking about it. So I'm gonna think. Put that on pause. I know we're going down to 212 though. So again, I'm gonna practice patience today. Um, CNBC is. Nothing that I really listen to. I think I'm more of what they call like a technical trader, but they give me alerts on um, big price moves, and that's really what I'm looking at or trying to listen to. We're talking about a scenario where the Fed is still hedging against averting the mistakes of 1970, not snuffing out inflation soon enough and being harder on inflation. So we're back to 6%. Inflation in a much more disorderly way, and that's not what their goal is. 
Right. Yeah, Diane, a few weeks ago when we were in the depths of, uh, of the banking worries, we were getting some uh, eco data that still looked fairly robust. People were saying, oh, don't worry, that's going to cool off with a lagged effect. Do we now need to look at those robust numbers more at face value? You know, it's really a good question. The measuring of the data, we know that there are skews in how we can measure the data coming out of a pandemic so rapidly. We're not good at seasonally adjusted and this adjusting the data with climate change and the reopening of the economy. And then you layer one other issue on top of it, and the response rates and revisions to the data have been quite substantial. Other economic data, and we're looking at everything we can, suggest the U.S. economy perhaps is cooling more rapidly than the overall data suggests that reacceleration in growth with I hope this support turns into resistance and we fill the gap. That's important to take into account, too. And the data is backward looking, and the Fed being data dependent means it's backward looking instead of looking forward at a time when clearly the terrain ahead has more potholes with the credit tightening that's already in the pipeline. How about uh, we're going to be we're going to have the markets closed next Friday for Jobs uh, Friday? But what is your what's your outlook for uh, the print? And jobs Friday versus Good Friday. That's fine. It takes a while for this kind of. All right, so we're at eight five two percent. That's what the price of one ninety seven. Our analysis suggests that the backbone of the job market, particularly in the post pandemic period, has been from smaller, younger firms, and that is where credit tightening is going to be the most dramatic. So as we get into the summer, you're going to see those jobs numbers I'm I think up on the other one. side and go negative. That's So, <clears throat> I know it has to breathe a little bit, so it's going to go up, but it did hit, I think, like, 198. Um, I'm going to let it breathe. So, I hit 10%. Really, all I'm shooting for is, like, 87 I do need to be careful because I kind of want to sell by 11 and it's already 1045. I don't like holding positions more than five minutes and I'm already an hour in. Um, not really a fan of patience. But Boeing does move slower. It's just fucking data, man. <laughs> be kicking my ass. So I am not trading. Um, 31 expirations. I'm trading April 6th. So I don't have to worry about stuff expiring today. I'm hoping we just are taking out a few um, limits and limit stop orders. So. Yeah, we're just waiting. All right, so we're back up to 10.3, or we're back up to 11%. Um, I am going to get out of some of the positions here. So at 201. So I'm selling at 204. And then I'm just going to sell out. So I got one, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209, 210, 211. We're going to do 212. Well, as good a month as the S&P has had, uh, both the FXI and the KWEB have done even better. Too, a pretty sure. remarkable uh, shift in policy. You just uh, talk soon. You just soon joining us tonight from Beijing. Still to come, uh, Satori Fund's Dan Niles is warning of more bank failures ahead, but he does say it is time to buy some names like Meta mm -hmm. and NVIDIA. We'll discuss uh, with Dan. He's had some and I'm not really worried about it, too, because I know that um, next week it is going to drop down to 208. So even if I do have to hold it, um, I'll actually 
make more because the VIX is low and, you know, it being the end of the month, um, companies are trying to balance their sheets. So, um, the beginning of the month, you know, I really don't have to worry about that. Now it is April and historically speaking, April stocks do go up, but we've hit such a run at the end of this month. Um, there's no telling what next month is going to look like. And then plus we got the feds going next month too, which is actually putting me in a better position. So even though <clears throat> I do not like to swing, um, I am willing. So that's another reason why I'm not too pressed about being patient today. And plus the kids want to go to the carnival tonight and yeah. All of my funds are in the market um, because I'm on a heavy compound interest schedule and, um, you know, I'd rather be liquid poor and be liquid wealthy in the future so I got a game plan but kids and the carnival and Easter are not working with it but whatever all right so I'm gonna get back to watching this as you can see I'm just waiting on Just to go we'll go all right so <clears throat> I got out I think I'm uh, well, let me see all of mine are going now all right so I have 21 left um, and we're at 12.81 so we're going to sell a couple at 209 just because, I mean, it's such a large position. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we got 209. We got 5 at 209, we got 210, 11, 12, 13, and then 22. I'm also watching like I haven't figured out what trades with BA maybe Kat does because I know BA definitely doesn't trade with Microsoft Netflix and um, Meta which are stocks that I know look crazy but that's the beauty of trading right you can look how you want Yes, I did take a shower last night. So. What up? Um, anyways, so I usually trade the I usually trade tech. I was going to buy um, 212.50 calls that expire today at 75 and sell them at 85 and I should have did that. Um, but 
but it is so crazy. Or I'm probably down back to like seven percent. I'm at eight point nine one, which isn't bad. Um, I think my goal is like eight point seven five, but. Not 11. <laughs> I'm like way too close here. Yep, y'all like the fit? I think it's somewhat typical of range bound markets where there's not a ton of deep fundamental conviction on either side. I would argue the bears on the macro. I love the SMAs. Um, I do open, high, low, close, four the 30 minute um some stocks the 30 minute doesn't work so you have to drop it to the 20 minute i am a minute trader but again like i said i don't like keeping i don't like keeping contracts really more than five minutes i like to buy and sell for um anywhere between a five and um kind of 15 percent but I learned my lesson, so like really it's 5 to 10%. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get a stock and then <clears throat> I'll average it out, put my, um, what I'm looking to get. So this is my minimums and then how much I should be selling those for. So like right now, realistically, I can sell and still make what I'm looking at, right? Your girl's gonna be greedy and miss out on it. <laughs> but I did lock in, I only locked in like 11 contracts, which is not, it really wasn't that much. Um, so I'm gonna cancel. All my orders. I know that 211.70 is a 61.8 retracement, which I love those retracements. Um, we're just at like this heavy price. Um, which is acting like support, but. It held as resistance prior, so all this shit is overbought, um, but it's still on a trend line that it hasn't broke yet. Well, actually, let me take out the extended. Alright, so this all started on... Friday of last week. And if you remember, that was the day that yeah, Looking back, my general view was over the weekend the government would do something. So it consolidated so yesterday, but I mean, it went right back today. So they would step in over the weekend. Yeah, so the market's gone from a low didn't about break anything. Um, Yeah, can see. Um, that following Tuesday, March 14th, and I said, look, I think the market can get up to about 4,100. See how, like, it consolidated yesterday, and then, I mean, it just quarter. zooted. And so we'll zooted yesterday, <laughs> um, like, at, like, 2 o'clock. It was freaking nuts. Um, freaking crazy. So, if we're running this, because, I mean, this is just an anomaly, and then plus we consolidated and went right back up to it, so let's, let's go. Alright, so we're kind of... Rates go up a lot, which squeezes their net interest income margins. And Schwab yesterday is a good kind of like you know, maybe sample set of what on the premise of it. We have Morgan Stanley, who's liked the um, stock for seven years, downgrade the company and say, hey, net so interest this, margins are going to we'll get just kind of see. But you see how smooth the these lines are? I can love Fibonacci. Like, look at that. Like, you know, at least it's going from 
214.80 to 213. The only thing is you have to be careful buying that because it's like right at the open and option contracts haven't adjusted in pricing. So even if you buy here, um, it could still be cheaper by the time it pulls back to here. And that's just because of they're trying to figure out the pricing for the market. So that's the only thing you have to be careful of, even though I started like buying here and bought all the way up to here and then holding back down. Just a food for thought. All right, so yeah, we're definitely going to be getting rid of some of these lines here. They're going to channel. We've started adding a few. We're back up to about 25% of the portfolio being short. That's nowhere near the 50. At least I wasn't tripping, y'all. So, so no, I'm back up to 11.45. I was wondering. I don't know if this is helping or hindering. Me, but I guess it's a good distraction at times just so I can wait and a not so good one. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I don't have That's anything. We've started adding back a majority of our shorts. We've gone from having no short banking system. All right, so let's do like 208. Monday, let's go now ahead. Let's do three of those. Because I got to. I don't like matter. being so high up in positions, right? I want to lock in, start locking in my profits because I don't know how long. Um, How long the market's going to keep giving me chances, right? A couple of days ago, and so with that space, you've got revenues in some cases that are down over fifty percent year over year, and so Intel, Nvidia, those are two names we've mentioned before. We like Facebook a lot. Um, some of the sports betting stuff we like as well, names like DraftKings or FanDuel, and so they're sectors we like. But you have to remember, we lived through this. Yeah, now we're at support too. Alright, so I have seven positions left. I'm at 13%. Or seven contracts left. And I'm paying for my other contracts. I bought like a couple. <clears throat> I bought like a Microsoft put that expires today for 25 bucks. And I gotta buy that out. And I bought like a couple BA calls that um, expired today for like 13 bucks a share. I bought three of those. Um... So, I'm out of all of my positions. Alright, for a grand total of 13.37%, which is $824.50. Um, so, there we go. Oh, which is $824.50. So it's 11.12, let's just call it 11.30, so $825 for two hours of work. Let's go!